Welcome to another episode of OS First Timer. In this episode, Diane is going to be trying out Windows 10 Technical Preview. This is build 9841 of Windows 10. The first operating system Diana used on this channel was Windows 8, and as much as she hated it, it ended up being her main operating system that she uses today on her Alienware laptop. Now she never got used to the Metro UI, so she installed the classic start menu. This has basically turned her Windows 8 experience into one very similar to Windows 7. With Microsoft planning to release Windows 10 next year, let's see if Diana approves of the new UI. Now welcome to the Windows 10 desktop. Windows 10? Whatever happened with Windows 9? I'm not sure about that. A lot of people online just say Microsoft don't know how to count, so... Maybe they just made Windows 9, didn't like it, scrapped it and went on straight on to Windows 10. <laughs> yeah. Windows 8, when you first open it, boots straight into that grid thing that you call Wall Street, the Metro UI. This well, one doesn't. You go straight to the desktop. and this That has, just yeah. goes to show that um, a lot of people out there did not like that um, Wall Street Windows 8 look and that people do like the desktop. I mean, Windows 8 is great, on, I believe, on iPads and those sort of devices. Is it iPads? No, that's a Mac thing. iPads run iOS. Windows 8 is good on touchy screen things, but not on desktops. So you're basically saying the Metro UI is good for touch. Well, yep. what they've done is they've kept that boxes screen in this operating system, but the plan is it only activates if you're on a tablet, and as soon as you plug in a Isn't keyboard, that a good idea? then it changes That's so it exactly what I said. Them. Wall Street is good on those touchy things, but this desktop is perfect for an actual desktop computer. Do you remember exactly what the start button did? in Windows 8. Actually, it didn't really have one. <laughs> well, it brought up a menu. It brought up that big screen of boxes. Oh, the yeah, Metro yeah, UI. Yeah, so yeah. that was the new start menu. Yeah. They've changed it again. Have a look oh, and tell me no. what you think. Who's that? No, that's just the news. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, who have you got on your computer? This is your computer. This is your account. Now, notice something funny. What do you think of the desktop background? Oh, look, it makes me feel as if this isn't even my account. What do you um, notice about the desktop background, first it's, of all? Well, it's got a beach scene, which I actually really like. Now, funny thing about that. Do you recognise that? This is the same beach shit screen you set as your Windows 8 desktop oh, no background. Way. So it remembered it, and as soon as you logged into your account here, yeah, it's put it that put on. It on. When I first installed this technical preview, it gave me a space background, and I'm yes. thinking, Microsoft used that? I'm sure I've used that as my background previously, and then I realised why. They copy information and mm -hmm. transfer it over, so it's almost like not too much of a big change when yeah. you use a new computer. It tries to make you feel comfortable yeah. with the new operating yeah. system. But what do you think of the new start menu. It's a mix yeah, of Windows like 7 and the Windows 8. So it's you get perfect. the Metro applications mm. which you can move around in the start menu and you've got like a Windows 7-ish kind of start menu together. So it's almost like they've gone, well, okay, I here's like that, it. here's that, you got them both. Yeah, like it. Like it a lot. And this sort of a desktop I'm familiar with it feels like home for me. So okay, like so your first task is what time is it? Easy. 5.38pm on the 3rd of October. Yep, and this technical preview, just so you know... On the 3rd is, of October, that was yesterday. Yes, That was this my is, wedding anniversary. This is 22 the, years. This is the time in America, just so you know. Well, the time in Australia is actually about 10.40... Oh, it's actually probably 10.38 on the 4th of October. Okay. So technically, we're time travellers to Americans. <laughs> We all live in the future. <laughs> <laughs> we all no. live in the future, yeah. Now what I want you to do is write, save and open a text document. You had a lot of difficulty in Windows 8 doing this because mm. of, you know, the Metro UI threw you off. Yeah. So now can you write, save and open a text document? Windows PowerShell. Did, did I even have that in my computer? Windows PowerShell is like the terminal type. It's just similar to a terminal. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know I can do a document from Notepad, so here it is. Oops. File. Um, okay, save as. And where is it saving in? What folder? I'll work that in? out later. So it's a doc. 
but I want to see if you know what folder it really is in here. What does it look like to you? What's what's it saying? What is this current folder it's in? It's in text document. But what like is the current so. folder? Look it's around on the this screen. Don't PC. click anything. It's in this PC, which is where I would assume it would be. I wouldn't want it to be in someone else's PC. So it would be bad if you wrote documents and they ended up on someone else's PC. Well, technically with Windows Cloud Sharing, that's now possible. <laughs> So you can save a document and it'll be on all your computers, you get it, with the mm -hmm. Windows Cloud. So if you write it here, then it'll be on your well, laptop. Well, I do want everywhere. it to be on this PC, this PC. so that'll okay. do. Okay, so Click it's it again. I don't think it... Oh, okay, you've got... See the word doc? You didn't get rid of the little... Oh, you need to get rid of yeah. that. It doesn't like yeah. it. Well, why did it put it there if it doesn't like <laughs> it? Because it's saying you've got to get rid of it and put something there. There you go. So close it off. You know what? I should have saved it to the desktop because I know it's in this PC. But where? Well, it actually told you the exact folder it put it in. How come I didn't see that? At the top of the screen. Well, look, it's in a document. It's in document. Doc text. There we go. Perfect. And how okay. do you open it? Double click. Now, one thing I want to point out here, mm. obviously Microsoft, this is just a little mistake they've made. This won't be in the full version, but what do you notice about the close button? Like the positioning of it. It's a bit dodgy, isn't it? It's kind of cut off by the sides. You know, oh, it's, well, instead it's of being not centered, like, it's kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. It's chopped off at the corner. Like, yeah, yeah, I see what And you on mean. some windows it isn't like that. On some windows it's placed nicely and others it's chopped off. Oh, look, that's a, such a small, minute detail. I've never, ever noticed that. Okay. As long okay. as it's red, there's an X and it's there. That'll and how do you delete? Have a little look. Before you right click, just tell me, is there any other obvious yeah, way of deleting it? Yeah, there is there. Straight off. Gone. Isn't that good? I tell you what, though. Yeah. You know how we always say, hey, we don't like the are you sure, otherwise we wouldn't have done it. It didn't ask you. It didn't ask. So you technically, if you had an important document and you accidentally had the cursor over there and you went to do something and you just clicked it and you thought, oh my god, my important document's gone. We actually got someone from Microsoft contact us and tell us the advice from the original Windows 8 video helped them make Windows 8.1 stuff like putting the a quick access to the close button, uh, the me? exit button, yep, the shutdown button How and stuff like that. How you that? That's well, cool. that was actually in your emails. Well, that's good that <laughs> what we're doing here is actually feedback that the software developers actually use. That's yeah. really good to know. Okay, so your next task is to calculate 28 divided by 3. Okay, technically I could calculate that in my head, but I know you want me to find a calculator, so I am going to go and find calculator. And what I liked about that is the little symbol at the side of it, so even if you couldn't read, you would know exactly what it was. Now the thing about this, I just find it funny, it just seems that Microsoft have almost placed all the applications that you I need used, yeah. right on the start menu for these tasks. It's like they wanted to do a perfect Windows 10 setup for the OS first time of video. Because <laughs> all the programs are there. Like, there's a bunch more programs, but they chose mm. for those specific programs that we use daily to be right there. Isn't that funny? So there you go. That's the calculation, 9.33. Okay, perfect. Okay, now change the desktop background. Okay, well, I'm going to right-click. Screen resolution personalize, yes. But I already like the desktop background. Why but, do we have to change it? Okay, but where would you go if you wanted to change well, it? Well, here. But where exactly? Okay, well, let's have a look. We've got it. Those are themes, those aren't desktop backgrounds. So you can change. Desktop background. And then you can change it there. Yep, that's yes. right. And so browse. So you could browse for an image and find it. Oh, but where are my pictures? Well, you've oh, got a pictures, pictures folder, yeah. But there's no pictures in there. What? But What's the point of having a picture folder if there's no pictures in there? This is what you could do, okay? okay. Um, you can but what if you want to get something off the net? Well, think about it. You go to the internet, and what do you usually do when you want a picture as your desktop background? Uh, you go to Google Pictures. Well, you go to Google or anywhere, and you right-click the picture and say, set as desktop background. Oh, well, yeah, okay, you do so that. that's what that's you do. Nice okay, so instead of changing the background, can you change the colours, then, of the computer? Okay. So back to personalisation to change the colours. Change icons, ch change mouse pointers. That sounds interesting. Can I change the mouse pointer? Well, see, you've got Windows default currently. Yeah. So and you then, can have a big mouse pointer or a small mouse pointer. No, you've got Windows default. So these are all the like things oh, that appear. That. Yeah, but those aren't your cursors. That just shows you all the positions that this cursor can go into. So this is all the oh, same cursor. Oh, this is all the south of that. You change it. Ones. Where do you think you change it? It's on the same screen. Pointers. No, it's on the same Windows screen. Windows default. Yeah, and those are all the different pointers. Oh, you can, you can have a really big pointer. You Magnified. know what? I'm going to have a big pointer. Don't you want a one? black one or some other color rather than just a big... Oh. Well, you can look at the big one if you want. <laughs>
If you want to use the big one. No more discussion about this. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Are you going to um, apply the big one? You know what? I'm not having a big one after you emphasising that. There's a black extra large one. No. This little black one will do. <laughs> apply. Okay, so now I've got a black one. Okay, there you go. Now. Oh, but it turns white. <laughs> <laughs> But now I want you to change the colour. Oh, no. <laughs> Not just about, like, the colour of the windows and stuff. Okay. It's really, it's quite change obvious. Change visuals and sounds on you. You can change the sounds yeah. on the computer. I haven't even heard any sounds. What is it? Are the speakers even on? No, those are the sounds there. Look, so if there's a critical stop, this yeah. is the sound it will make. Why do you need all this? But because it's connected to your computer, actually, we can't hear all the oh, sounds. Oh, okay. okay. But there are sounds. We know yeah, there are sounds. Yeah, there would be And sounds. you can select the different yeah. sounds. I'm yeah, gonna... it's we're, we're running it off a laptop and then connecting it to the What is this world screen. coming to that you can even select the different types of sounds that you want to hear on it? Okay, so you want me to change the colour. Let's go straight into it. Colour. Pink. Save changes. You've also got intensity as well, but that's the intensity you chose. That'll do. So what do you think? Was that pretty easy? You just got a colour and then change easy. it and so there's the, everything, yeah. There's the background to change, there's a colour to change, you can change the sounds. Oh, they don't like the screensaver. No, there's no screensaver. You don't have a screensaver right now. Okay. So you would enable one if you want. Oh well, forget about that. Okay. So now that you've done all the tasks that have been required... That's pretty good. I like <laughs> this operating system. It's really easy. I yeah. mean, considering how hard Windows 8 was to most people when it first came out, this is a huge improvement. And the fact that it can identify if it's on a tablet or it's on a desktop like this... It can't right now, but it will oh, in the full release. Okay, yeah. fine. Well, I think that is a fantastic feature. What a good adaptable operating system. And the tasks were easy to do because everything is just so set out well, logical, and this is what I call a user-friendly, intuitive operating system. Okay, so we'll go over the main new features now of Windows 10, and you tell me what you think of these main new features. First of all, the start menu. You've got your list of your recently used programs here, some pinned programs up here. Remember, you can also pin programs to this taskbar, just like in your Windows 8. And you've got all apps, so you click that and it shows you all the applications like that. Do you think that's pretty useful? That is a very, very useful, and, and I, love the, I love the pictures and, and the description. Perfect. Okay, fantastic. But you've also got this Metro UI here. So the people who still want to use that and still want to get little status updates Perfect. and stuff, they've still got that and you can move things around, see, mm. like this and you can see and put things up this there. This is going to suit a you lot know, of people. You know, as if it was all, you know, just mm. the same. Yeah. But personally, I don't use this this Wall Streety thing. I like the You don't use list. these apps. No. I use them a lot but on my Microsoft Surface, the tablet. Yeah. Now, the thing is, another thing you didn't like, remember you went into mail that time, right? Yeah. And it was full screen. It got rid of the taskbar, oh, got rid yeah, of the thing. Oh, yeah, that's right, I didn't like well, that. Well, now you've got your mail, but look, you've got your little buttons up the top. You can have windowed Metro applications, you see. Yeah, yeah. So they don't have to be full screen anymore, see? These yeah. applications can now be in a window. Isn't that good? Yeah. That's a useful feature. Now, another thing is window snapping. So, let's say you have your notepad application up, right? Is that like the snip thing? Hmm? The snip. Oh, no, it's got the snipping tool there. Yeah, no, snapping. So with the window snapping, all you used to be able to do is you put your window to the side, it snaps it there. Oh, yeah, I know. And if and you this put one it to the there. top, it, it exactly. goes to the top. Yeah, okay. Now, it's a little more advanced. One thing I didn't like, though, is I wanted it to snap back into its position. When I take it away from here, I want it to snap back, but it stayed in that oh, stretched out position. I see. Um, but one of the things you can do now is instead of just snapping two, because you know how it's sometimes you don't want to just snap two applications. Let's say you had a web browser two that you wanted to snap, mm -hmm. right? Well, now you can snap multiple applications into the four corners. So I want the web browser up there. Now see what it does. It automatically positions it like that and snaps it. Yeah. And then this one, it's like, oh, what do you want to do with this? You know. Did I see it like a clear window for a sec? A clear window. Like almost like the uh, Vista type. A transparent. That was yeah. just a new little interface that, like, when you first snap a window, it gives you a few oh, options. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that was. So, what do you think about that snapping? Why don't they have that transparent thing? Because that was a really good feature. It of was nice Vista, to have transparent. I think, thing. and I think it looks really modern. Why don't they do that in this? 
Microsoft, you should incorporate that nice Vista transparent thing. I like it. Now, from memory, I think the charms bar is gone. The yep. what? It's the thing you put your cursor in the top corner of the screen and this little menu pops out with settings and search right. and all. Remember that at the site? And oh, yeah, yeah, that's up. right. That no, little that thing little, would like that black come thing, yeah. in. I, I, that's yeah, gone now. That annoys me sometimes because sometimes when I'm doing something on the screen, suddenly that thing pops out and I don't want it to pop out. So you find that in Windows 8 it pops out it's sometimes? A, it's a bit annoying, yeah. yeah. It pops out when you don't want it to pop okay. out. Okay. Well, that's... From what, from what I've seen and what I've heard, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Do you actually like the fact that instead of only being able to snap left and right, yeah. you can now also, if you put it up there, you can do, you know... Four. and four. That's useful, especially if you don't have multiple mm. screens and you want to look at multiple things at once. I think that's a really good option. Yeah. Okay, so there is now another feature. Do you ever use the keyboard combination Alt-Tab to switch to programs? Not really. So let's say you had um, Paint full screen, and you wanted to quickly switch to Notepad, quickly press Alt-Tab now. Alt-Tab, yes. And then that quickly switches to Notepad. Okay. You see that? So one of the things you'll notice, if you look here, you, you know can keep pressing Tab to switch between them. You yeah. know what would be better? Instead of pressing Alt-Tab, why don't they just select one button to save two? You know what I mean? Well, one thing they actually have added is a button down here. Now, this is called the Task View button. And if you click it, look at that, you can switch between your applications. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, you know, it just displays, OK, you click that. What have I got open? I want to quickly switch to this. But that's it's still two buttons. But this is better because then you can select which one you want to in case you've forgotten how many applications well, you, you can, have open. Well, you can because with Alt-Tab, you can put your finger on then click click tab, tab, tab to switch between yeah, them. Yeah, okay. Keep pressing Fair tab enough. till it's the one you want. Yeah, yeah. Now, the thing about this, it's not really useful unless you've got, like, five full yeah. screen applications at once because if they're not full screen, well, you know, it's no, use, it's no yeah. use. So let's say you had web browser full screen, Microsoft Word 2013 full screen, yeah. Yeah, remote desktop full screen. That's a quick way to switch between them. So um, another thing that Microsoft has added, though, with this, you've got add a desktop. Remember I the don't virtual need an extra des desktop. This will do me. I, one desktop is enough. Not this extra desktop. Remember the virtual desktops from Linux. I don't have enough screens to <laughs> fit another desktop on anyway. These are virtual desktops. Remember in Linux how you've got that like four desktop things, so you can have a few programs on this desktop. Then you switch to the other desktop, and the other programs are running on that desktop. Yeah. Remember it used to have the little four I would never screens, use and you that. switch between. Well, it's taken Microsoft a long time, but they've finally taken that feature from Linux and put it in their own system. No. Oh, right. Yeah, I guess you could say it's a stolen idea. But there we go. So you can switch to this desktop. Now on this desktop, you don't have anything open, but I'll just open something now. I've yep. got this open on this desktop. And then let's say, okay, I want to go back to the other desktop where I'm working on that. So I click this, go here, and there's all my other programs on yes. this desktop. So you can see multiple desktops. This desktop, I've got all this stuff open. This desktop, I've got this open. Yep. So you might have one desktop where you're doing like casual things, that, you know, you I just do the things one at a time rather than So you than don't see yourself using this feature? Not at all. Just out of interest, don't you think that this desktop is actually pretty easy, you know, to use? Like, look at this, you've got this and it shows you all your programs here. And the other multiple desktop here, you can see all the programs that are open yeah. there. And if you wanted to close one of these programs, how would you do that? Oh, that's easy, the X. The X, and you can switch between these multiple desktops just by cursoring over them. How would you add a new desktop, for example? That's easy, that little plus I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. there we go. And then how would you close off one desktop? Well, I'm assuming go the X like and it goes. Now, did you find that a really well-designed feature? You you don't I use did. multiple desktops. I did, because look, I don't use multiple desktops. You asked me the question, within seconds I was able to find the answer. It was just really intuitive and logical as to how to do it. So this would be great for anyone, easy to use. This is a kind of a Linux thing, a multiple desktops thing. Mm. Mac also has this, and Microsoft was the only person who didn't have this multiple desktops thing. Oh, well, so they it's got great it that they've kind of got it. Yeah. Okay, so your last task is to turn off the desktop. I mean, turn off the computer. <laughs> well, it, turning off the computer turns <laughs> off the desktop. Yeah. Okay, I'm assuming you go there. Yep. Now, where does the shutdown button look like it is? What's, you know, where does it look like it might be? Oh, there it is, that little symbol right, right there. Right next to your name. So remember in Windows 8, you had to go to the charms yeah. menu, then the settings, then power, then shutdown. There was four clicks. Well, this time there's two clicks. Well, we three go. start when you that shut down. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they've gotten rid of one of the clicks. Yeah, good. What do you think about Windows 10? Is it an improvement over Windows 8? Well, let's just say throughout the video I have commented on what I think of it. And at the beginning of the video you asked me, let's see if Diana approves. 
Yes, I approve. It is definitely a huge improvement over Windows 8 and I believe it gives the best of both worlds. People who like the Wall Street and people who like the desktop. And as a little hint on what our next video will be about, hmm, got the case, but I think it's missing something. Got to wait for it to come. And for those who like the Terrified Mum channel, which is one of our other channels, the next video will be the Oculus Rift. Although that's not an Oculus Rift, no, just so you know. We're waiting for that to come <laughs> as the well. hard drive. Uh, we ordered it two months ago, so it should come in a, one more month or so. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so welcome to the Windows 8 desktop. Now remember... Oh, no. What? Why isn't there a Windows 9? I don't freaking know. Everyone's saying Microsoft don't know how to count. The advice from the original Windows 8 video helped them make Windows 8.1 stuff like putting the, a quick access to the close button, uh, the me? exit button, yep, the shutdown button, and How stuff like that. Tell me that. That's well, you big read stuff. it in your emails and you forgot about it. Oh, <laughs> my memory. <laughs> okay. I get so many emails. <laughs> Can we just um, rewind that for a second what? and just just let me say I I, I look I sound stupid saying <laughs> I couldn't remember what was in my okay. email. So I I just. Okay. That was in your emails. You say that was in your emails. Well, that was in your emails. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Why is it so funny no, that that's in your emails? I just forgot what I was actually going to say because I wanted to do it again, but you said it so quickly enough. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what did I want to say? Um, that was in my email. Oh, well, look at that outside. You oh, can't see it? it. There it it's is. It's basically saying. And they've not paid us. Ah, oh, the screen doors in their way. That's something that's you uh, notice with the Oculus okay. Rift, the screen door effect. But it's basically talking about the Australian NBN, which is... Oh, don't we need that, our internet? We do. Okay. <laughs> We've got the highest, most expensive Telstra plan, and it's only 100 kilobytes upload. Okay. Per second.